Oh, good, you're here. Oh, I'm just doing a new quilt and it's got curves in it. And I thought, wow, I need to show all my quilting buddies out there how to do curves. There's a lot of people who are scared to death of curves and there's really no need to be. I'll show you some hints. And by the way, you really need to learn how to do curves because there's so much in quilting that's fun once you're not scared of those. The quilt I'm making right now is this one. Whoops, sorry. This one, okay? <laughs> it has two pieces, this and this. Now I've traced those two pieces, cut them out of paper, and tape them on two circles. Now they're two different circles, aren't they? That's because, take a look at this. This one that you're going to put into there is different than this curve. And here's the reason. What you're trying to match is the seam line a quarter of an inch in with the seam line a quarter of an inch in. This means that this has to be longer, this has to be shorter. All right, and that's what we're going to try to do. This is the border. I haven't pressed it yet, but isn't that cool? I love the colors we're coming up with. Let's do some cutting. Now the A piece is this. I've taken a bite out of a square. So here's my square. I'm going to lay this down on top of that and then I'm going to cut right around there like that. Now I've pre-cut this of course but I've got my bite out with this template right here. Now those are the A pieces. Now we're going to start with the B pieces and I have cut out a rectangle here where I know I can get two B pieces out of there. One here and one here. Now we're going to do the B piece. This is the template right here and I've labeled it B. I'm going to lay it down here on this rectangle and then I'm going to cut right around there like this. And I come off with a B piece. I can do another one over here on this corner and take it out of there. Alright, so now we have our A pieces and B pieces. So we're going to put all of this stuff away and we're going to put them together. This is the A piece, this is the B piece. And boy, it looks like that is never going to go together, right? But keep in mind that what you're really matching is the seam line a quarter of an inch in and the seam line a quarter of an inch in. So if it looks right, it's wrong. <laughs> now, we have to find the center here. If you want, you can take it to the ironing board and actually press a little pleat here and a little pleat here and match up those pleats. But you know what? You might want to do that in the very beginning for a few. But here's what I do. And you'll learn how to do this too. With this line matching, matching that edge right up here, I'm going to center this on, the, I'm going to center the B piece on the A piece so that the amount showing here is exactly the same as the amount showing here and this meets right up here. The next thing I'm going to do is pin right there so that I have now identified the center and matched it. What you need to know on this one, and you really don't need to know it, but I think it helps to understand it, is you've got bias here and you've got bias here. You don't have any bias here, which means you're going to sew it like a regular seam up to about here, but from here on you can stretch it. 
Same thing here. I'm going to sew it pretty much like a regular seam, but from here on in, you can stretch it so that this stretches out so that these quarter inch lines match. I'm going to turn it over to sew. And just flip this. And I like to start with my corner pinned and matched. Some of you are going to want to cut multiple layers. What I cut for you just now, I was only on two layers, and that's very, very easy. A lot of people like to use this mini cutter. Yeah, I haven't found it's really... I, I simply prefer this cutter here that I always use. But let's say you're the kind who's always in a hurry, like me, and you want to cut a stack of fabrics. That's a little different cutting with curves. Now I'm going to cut, I've got this little stack here, and one of the things that's happening now is this is lower and it kind of lifts this up. And when you press down on here, you don't have anything to hold it here. So what I do is I take a whole bunch of leftovers that is the same height, and I do this every time on anything where I'm cutting just okay where I'm cutting something so small that this tilts down. Now I'm going to take this and because that blade is sticking straight out it's pushing everything ahead so every so often I come back like this Oop. see that releases all that stuff it's pushing ahead and if I find that I'm going I have pushed this out from there what I'll do is I'll come back like this to finish it out. And that's how I cut multiple curves. Now this may end up a little chewed up. It really isn't going to matter. It's not that I would take a scissors to do that. Okay, but that's how you cut multiples. Little forward, little back to release it. Little forward, little back. Oh, you know what? I need my glasses. All right, hang in here for a minute. There, now I can see what I'm doing. Okay, put that right in there and match up that little corner there. And then I'm going to put a pin about a quarter of an inch in. Now I'm ready to sew. Now a lot of times people will match up this one too. And you have to decide for yourself whether it's going to work or not. But this is ready to take to the sewing machine now. Okay? See how I can pull that out so it matches. So come with me to the sewing machine. Now, here we are at the sewing machine. And we're all set to go. Now I'm going to show you my way of sewing curves. But keep in mind that as with practice you'll develop your own way. It may not even be like mine. But I'm going to go really slow to show you what is important. First of all, I'm going to start like it was a regular seam because remember there's no bias there now. And with my needle in, I'm going to take this out. Don't sew over pins if you don't have to. And then holding these edges together, I'm going to sew just about a half an inch. Now, something else you may want to, before you ever start sewing, give this a little tug and actually stretch it out before you sew. Now look how nice that stays right up against that edge. And you just follow that round edge. I'm not pulling on this one down here, the B piece. Now when I get to that center, I'm going to take this pin out and lift this up a little bit to adjust it. Yeah, shoot. Okay, I was trying to keep my hand out of the way. It isn't going to work. Alright. 
I'm just going to keep sewing there. And notice how I'm just taking this and pulling it a little bit. You'll get used to learning how fast to pull it. And you can end up doing these pretty fast. That faster is better, actually. Now, when I see that I can match these up at the point where it matters, which is a quarter of an inch down from here, that's where they're matching, I take a real good, whoops, you know what? I see a pleat under there. All right, lift the foot up and fix it. I'm going to really hang on to that now so they stay together. And there we are. Slick as a whistle. Ready to press. Okay. Now, okay. We're ready to press this little sucker. Now, again, you need to learn about bias and something else. I haven't clipped these. Oh, that's such a hassle. Ugh, I don't do that. But that means that I want those little excess uh, pieces right there to all go towards the center. So that's the way I'm going to press. I'm going to press here, and then I'm going to come over and give it a little press there, and a little press in. So you see, I'm pressing into those seams. And give it a good press. I haven't pulled on this at all. You want to be careful or you'll end up with a diamond here. So let this alone and just press in like this. This needs to be four and a half inches, this particular one that I'm working on. So after I press it, I will take it and put a four and a half inch square. And if I need to trim a little bit off of here, I do that. I'm really not for trimming, but on this one you can. Don't trim the square, the A piece. Trim only the B piece and you're ready to put them all together. And by the way, this is probably the toughest curve you'll ever do. Most curves are much softer and much easier. So if you learn the drunkard's path, all oh, you're home free on curves. Hope you enjoyed this. Have fun. Do try it. Okay? Happy quilting. Bye.